Hi there, this is Anna from Anna Aspinus Designs. I'm back with a new video. And today I want to take a look at a digital artistry or scrapbooking layout by Adrienne. She has a very complex style and specifically, I want to look at the multiple layers of textures and paints that she uses with the tools in Photoshop to create her artistry. And specifically, I want to look at the new brush set bundle that was released last Friday. So that includes artsy paint, artsy stains, tape, paper, and spackle textures. I think she's just used the artsy paint and the paper and tape textures, but the other products can be used in a very similar fashion to the way that she's used all of those other digital art supplies. So she has a very unique and a very complex style. And the aim of showing this to you is really just to give you an idea of what can be done. So there are definitely layers to every piece of artistry in Photoshop. And so your digital artistry may have fewer layers, it may have more, but it's always good to see what other artists are doing so that you can then tweak your process to perhaps include some of those techniques and maybe add some new layers to your own artistry. So obviously with every single layer in the layers panel, the artistry will become more refined and more complex. This is the end result of her page. I have organized her layers into various groups. I'm going to switch those off and we'll go through them individually so that we can see how she built this page. And obviously she didn't perhaps do this in order. She probably kind of flitted back and forth from different positions in her layers panel. But for ease of demonstration, I think it would be good just to go through one by one. So you can see she started her page with a simple color fill and she used a muted teal color as the foundation of her page. And then she added some artsy paint marks on different layers over the background to create a simple design. So here the artsy paint is being used as a foundation as well as adding contrast in color to the background that she's created. She then added a layer of paper textures. And so if I go ahead and open up this folder, you can see that there are multiple layers in this particular group. And she has basically layered them up on top of one another. So you can see this first one is in a gray color. It has a normal blending mode. And then she's intensified that by duplicating that layer and then even tripling that effect by adding another layer just to give it more visual presence. And so she continues with this process building up and you can see now she's building up on this left side with the different paper textures and so it goes on. So there's lots of different layers here in order to add intensity. She's then added some white artsy paint. Now notice how the light value of this color contrasts with the dark value in the paper textures. And then she's gone ahead and softened that texture with this color fill here. She's used a blending brush or a soft round brush to just paint in the side. And I think we will see the relevance of that as the piece progresses. I'm sure that this was added towards the end of the process. And then she added a hue and saturation to that to make it much darker. So there's an adjustment layer that's clipped to that brushwork in order to affect the color change. And then she started adding in the imagery of her design. And so there's a partial photo here of some water. And again, this was probably added towards the end of the process, but just to show you the various layers, how they're building up, I'm showing you this first. If we go ahead and open that, you can see we've got multiple layers and they've all been masked using brushes and a layer mask. And you can see that each one of these layers is a duplicate copy and they are all set to soft light blending modes. To that, she's then added a hue and saturation just to shift the color slightly. And then she adds in her masked photo with another hue and saturation layer added. So notice how that just removes the color 
on the right hand side of the image and again it's been masked with brushes and a layer mask. And then we come to the textures portion where she starts to add visual interest using a variety of different textures. So if I go ahead and turn that on, we can turn these off individually and then look at them. So the first one is a tape texture. You can see it's been added to the right hand side. At a normal blending mode, you'll also notice too that she's added these in gray, which is also my preferred method for adding brushes. I find that gray is the best way to start and then you can add in a tint of blue or brown depending on the color palette of your page. The gray works in this case because she's working predominantly in black and white tones. The next layer is a paper texture and again this is set to normal. She's varied the shade of gray that she's used. We have another paper texture that comes across the top. So notice how she's layering these up and with each stroke it increases the complexity, the depth and the visual interest in her design. So I'm going to keep just adding these on and you can add blending modes to these different brush strokes. I like to add multiply and linear burn. Sometimes I'll add a color burn or a soft light. In this case, Adrienne has just simply stuck to her normal blending mode. You can see here that she has brought in a photo and to that she's added a Gaussian blur and a shape blur just to make that image a little softer and then she's added another paper texture over that. So little by little she's building up this masterpiece. And then we've got this textured frame effect, which she's added. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. I'm going to switch off all of the layers and then we'll go through and add them back in so that we can see how she built up this complex element. And as you can see, it goes quite the way down till we get to the bottom here. So she started with this masked shape and to that she's clipped and it looks like one of the torn frames and then to that she's clipped a series of other layers. So to start with, we have the original photo and then we have another photo over the top of that. And then there's another photo on top of that. So notice how she's layered up three different photos, the third one being an extracted version. And then the first one's being masked slightly and so she's varied the positioning of all of her photos. This one she probably didn't need to have in the back here. She probably added that one to begin with and then added these two in after she decided the positioning of her subject. And then we've got more paper textures. So notice how she's placed them across her photo and then another one that comes down on the left hand side here. And we keep layering those different paper textures up. She's got a paper texture here, which you can see she's added a mask to. So that's another option for you. You can use the eraser tool or brushes and masks to change the shape of any of the brushes. And then here's the torn edge that we add to the frame. So all of those layers have been clipped to the mask layer. And now we are working with the torn edge layer. You can see that she has a number of those textures clipped to that torn edge as well. So we have paper texture and I'm just going to keep going through and switching these on. They're all different paper textures and tape textures with different orientations all in various shades of grey. This one looks to be a tape element that she's brought in and um, some other tape elements that have been added to kind of give this frame a bit of visual interest. So even though we've got the tape underneath, we can still see those tape textures coming through. You can see that she's added multiply blending modes to these, allowing those underlying paper and tape textures to show through her design. And so she completes it by covering up the entire torn edge. And then we have an artsy stain. So she's added this artsy stain over here on the left hand side in black and she's masked an area of it. And then she's clipped a photo, two copies of the photo, one in normal and one in overlay at 84% opacity to that stain. 
So this artsy paint and stains, as well as adding color and visual interest to your page, they can also be used as interesting masks with the clipping mask function in Photoshop and Elements. Our next group of layers adds a variety of tape and paper textures to the piece. I'm gonna go ahead and turn these off and we'll look at them individually as we have done with previous groups. And you can see as I start turning these on, she's placing the tapes so that they adhere the frame to her background. So that's another way you can use these textures is to actually have function in the design of the piece. And so she has duplicated some of these. Again, she's working in the normal blending mode with a variety of different gray hues. We can go and bring those up. And then she switches to paper textures. So we've got more paper textures and then back to the tape textures. Notice how she color codes her layers as well in order to help her decipher what is what in her piece. It's uh, important to use groups and these coloring options in order to be able to keep track of the layers and she's also named her layers too which is pretty handy and so she's added in more paper and tape textures I like how she added this paper texture at the top which then mirrors the same paper texture on the bottom she's then brought in and emphasized her focal photo and she's done this by adding in an extracted version of the image let's go ahead and just turn off all of these texture layers and you can see that we have the extracted image here and what that does is it builds in the right hand side of the photo which was lost by the frame so we brought that in and then she's added a drop shadow layer style to add dimension and then she's continued to add tape textures in the same fashion continuing up she's got tape textures over the frame and then over on the left hand side of the piece to balance the textures on either side and so she continues with the same process and then she brings in photo glows which add color to her page i'm going to go ahead and open that and you can see that we've got a variety of different photo glows she's got overlay um, soft light varying opacities this one's at 53 we've got 65 and so she's got a number of these and each one of them work with all of the others to create the lighting and the color in her piece so more overlay uh, generally it looks like she's got a soft light and overlay I quite like to use uh, hard light with my photo glows um, just depends on both your preference and what you're working with and then she's gone ahead and added some words into the mix so these are in the form of various masked pieces of paper and she's got numbers which she's added with the text tool she's got brushes which she's added in there as well as some word art so lots of different ways that she's added this word overlay to her piece and then she's added some brushwork to create visual interest and also too she's got this brad in there and then some more brads and then she's duplicated that brad in order to intensify it and then finally she's added some birds in so a long layout in which she's added layers and layers of brushes and textures in order to create this fantastic textual piece of artistry. I'm not suggesting at this point that you now go to your computer and start building layers upon layers but maybe just start with maybe three or four layers and then build that up to maybe five or six and then maybe you get up to ten and before you know it as you keep adding different layers and experimenting with the different brushes you'll soon be able to increase the complexity and add the same visual depth to your own digital artistry designs hope you've enjoyed this video if you've got any questions please feel free to shoot me an email at classes at annaaspenasdesigns.com I will be on vacation next week, but I'm hoping to be back the week after with another video with a brand new release. Thanks for watching and have fun layering your own brushes and textures.